So what's uh, funny about any project is you never really know which part of it's going to cause you the most trouble. And uh, while I thought that the sway bar was going to be my biggest problem, what's turned out to be the biggest problem was actually the power steering pump. So um, I've driven a few MX-5s that have been converted recently, all actually with the AC50 motor. Um, and these cars have one thing in common, and that is that they've had depowered racks and uh, I find that a little bit heavy um, and the manual racks are a little bit hard to come by here in New Zealand so uh, I decided to go with the good old uh, Series 1 MR2 power steering pump I've had this hanging around for several years while I collected all my parts but um, I've uh, elected to, to install this in the car and I thought a nice place for that would be up underneath the wheel arch um, and after talking with people like uh, Tim Cadillier in, uh, in particular, um, I decided to try and uh, vibration isolate the pump because uh, I've seen YouTube videos and these things sound like they're absolutely screaming. So um, version one was a bit of a mount bracket with some rubber isolating bushes and a bit of a cradle on the, on the motor itself. And there we go, such like. Um, first problem with that was that the uh, the counterweight tended to want to twist the, the pump over. So I then thought about, similar to this, putting a little pin in the top and so we could uh, sort of uh, mount this through a bushing and that would stop that from, from pivoting over. So uh, that turned out to be not very successful either. So after a little bit of cutting and hacking and chopping things about, I've uh, decided to actually hard mount it and, uh, and see how we go with that. So um, if I uh, spend any more time on this, I'm going to go crazy. So let's just get the thing in the car. Um, one of the first things I did actually was to replace the existing uh, stem bolt fitting here with an AN6 hydraulic fitting. And uh, we should be able to call in the mobile hydraulics man and uh, get some hoses uh, wired up for the car up here in my garage at home. One of the other things is the I managed to procure the original plugs and, and pins when I purchased this. So I've been able to rewire the, the, ma the mating side of this plug with some high voltage cabling or high current cabling I should say, this is obviously a 12 volt pump and uh, that will fit onto a fairly fairly juicy 60 amp 12 volt uh, fuse which I'll mount up on the firewall probably I think I've actually covered it before but I'm going to um, probably power this directly from the, uh, the cable that goes to the battery which was originally connected to the starter motor so uh, let's uh, see what it's, where it's going to go in the car Okay, so this is the passenger side uh, wheel arch, front wheel arch, which is where I'd uh, always intended that I would like to try and uh, to fit the power steering pump. Uh, well, I was going to try and mount that bracket I showed you just previously up on this uh, on this area through here up on the the front chassis. Um, unfortunately, there's a there's a few holes already in it, but none quite where I was looking to mount it. Um, we have an issue here, so we've got the front spotlight uh, that gets in my way and um, also the routing of the hoses back through from the uh, from the power steering reservoir on the other side of the um, wheel arch there. So uh, after trials and tribulations with the vibration isolation style mount I uh, thought well we've got a, a fairly handy M6 stud there and another hole a little bit further back here an M6 as it turns out to be uh, there so I thought well bugger it there's too much hassle so far let's just hard mount it so I'll 
chuck the uh, chuck the pump up in place and show you what it looks like. And there we go. Uh, I think uh, should be should be okay for a first try. Um, this is my, my brackets being a bit hacked up a bit, so I'll uh, get a new one made up to all the proper dimensions. As you see, I'm I'm not actually picking up that front hole yet. So uh, get some um, some spaces made and all the right, right bolts and etc. But um, so we've got the hydraulic inlet pointing in the oh, sorry that's the outlet high pressure outlet pointing in the right sort of direction off towards the off towards the um, the power steering rack and our uh, return line up there behind it so we should be able to wrap things around from inside the engine bay like uh, like so so you can see that there in the front So right now I've got the um, power steering pump uh, sort of temporarily hooked up electrically. I'm using the uh, what used to be the alternator lead to provide the power, and it's going up uh, to the, to the um, relay block there. And I've got a high voltage relay or high current relay down there to, to power the real the um, power steering. Um, at the moment I've got the battery charger on for the 12 volt and we're reading about 12 amps going into the battery at the moment we're just topping up the 12 volt system so up here on the dash we have the um, finally installed JLD 404 and the isolation switches for the heating and the power steering. Now this at the moment is hooked directly up to power so um, normally it only work on the key switch but at the moment it's it's working full time so that means I can turn the, turn the power steering on and it's making quite a racket I don't think it'll be quite so bad once the bonnet's on but we are drawing about 35 amps up from 12 so that means ah, about 20 amps draw on the uh, on the power steering so if we just uh, hold that there for a minute and uh, crank the steering wheel around a bit it's topping right out it's topping right out at 50 amps plus there so Okay, so I've just unlocked the steering. <laughs> Let's have another try. Fifty amps plus. Okay, I think that's enough fun for there. Okay, so now with the key switch on, you can see the isolation switch is illuminated. Turn it off, off she goes. And that just then was the vacuum pump. So we've also got the vacuum pump hooked up to the, uh, the same 12 volt supply. And tracing this back, we go to a, an automotive relay this fuse box is actually out of a Mitsubishi Galant but um, by the time I'm finished that's going to look quite at home here in the car I hope so we've got a nice 
cover go on there and we'll mount up uh, the main isolation fuse for the power steering. Uh, I've got the inertia switch wired up there as well and a couple of relays to go in to provide extra 12 volt power for the controllers and the vacuum pump and a few other bits and pieces and the front negative contactors so here's the vacuum pump all mounted up underneath the battery box there and that runs off through a couple of hose cables and I've got a vacuum reservoir hidden down the front so we're starting to make some serious progress and uh, we'll carry on I've uh, finally made it back to the workshop and uh, once again Pukekohe Pass got a bit of racing going on in the background so uh, try and tune out that horrible noise of petrol engines roaring and what I'm working on today is the throttle and you can see I've just mounted off at the back there a, an industrial uh, micro switch uh, similar to this one or in fact the same uh, standard sort of thing normally open normally close contacts and I'm using the original MX-5 throttle body as you can see here I've uh, mounted a little um, bolt up on the uh, up on the original butterfly there and that uh, the head of that's pressing on the uh, the plunger of the micro switch on the other side so that uh, works beautifully got a little bit of a little just a little a bit of over travel there and that's great so uh, so the original MX-5 throttle pedal or throttle pot there is a corresponds to a type 3 from HPVS schematics a uh, little bit of figuring out which uh, which pin was which but I think I've got that down now and all I have to do now is to connect the the wires to the micro switch uh, got uh, <coughs> the original uh, tail off the um, MX-5 wiring loom and uh, well currently a three pin but I'm gonna have to swap that out for a five pin or a six pin Deutsch connector and uh, patch that into the uh, the loom supplied by HPVS. Um, yeah, so st stay with me. I'll uh, carry on and wire that off. <laughs> 